Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. How are you all doing? I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer so far. Uh, if you are new to this channel, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. This is our weekly live call. We do this every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to have my amazing co-host Yasmir introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Yasmir. I am one of the content creators for Clever Girl Finance, joining you from New York City. Yes, and Yasmer is also one of our personal finance coaches, if you did not know that. So if you wanted to take advantage of our coaching offering, which you can find in the notes description below, definitely check that out. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for personal finances, for business, and et cetera. Hi, Agniska. Hi, Tracy. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Analyst. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, JG. Hello. Hi, Joyce. So today we're going to be talking about how to drastically cut expenses to the bone because sometimes uh, you may just need to cut down your expenses. You might be going through a difficult situation. You might have a financial goal you're to accelerate you may have gone through you know a job loss whatever it might be sometimes we get to a point where we're like you know what i really need to cut back on my expenses i need to cut back hard so today we're going to talk about that before we get into that hello cindy and sadie hello Subi. thank you guys for always being here this is so exciting especially during the summer when everybody should be out in the streets well not out not should be but most people are out in the streets living their best summer lives. So thank you for making time to be here with us. Uh, hello, Barbara. Hello, Jennifer. Um, hi, Tandy. Okay, so before we dive in, if you haven't already checked out the Club World Finance Planners, please, please do. There is a business planner, a life planner. These are both undated planners, so you can start using them anytime. You can see pictures of the inside of them on our website at clevergirlfinance.com slash shop. We have these planners all year round, and we're going to be launching a new planner as part of an exciting project that we will be sharing with you soon. It's This new planner looks incredible. We can't wait to share it, but this is undated. You can use anytime. They're also hardcover. Uh, they're really nice. We put our heart and love into this, into these two planners. So definitely check them out. And then don't forget to check out the Clever World Finance book series. Uh, these are great books, you know, for gifts, right? Um, and there are four books in the series. The first book, Clever World Finance, Ditch Debt, Save Money, Build Real Wealth, Grow Your Money, The Investing Book, The Side Hustle Guide, About Side Hustles, and my most recent book, uh, Choosing to Prosper, about building my business and just empowering you to achieve your goals and your dreams. So check that out. Okay, so I see more people coming in. Hi, Sadie. Hi, Nafisa. It's been a while. <laughs> Hi, Bessie. Hi, Funi. Okay, so let's get into the topic, Yasmer. Yes, so um, how to, six tips on how to drastically cut expenses to the bone. Um, this is a good strategy if you are finding it challenging to make ends meet, um, your current budget isn't working, and savings may be impossible. Um, and this is not to say, like, um, reduce um, your fund your reduce your spending indefinitely right but it is something that's temporary but is necessary um, in case of loss of income um, if you have a major major goal um, in the long term or if you are trying to pay off debt so we're gonna um, talk about six tips um, that can help you yes yeah, so as i mentioned earlier and as yasmin just said sometimes we get to a point where we just need to cut down expenses. You may have, you may be going through a difficult financial situation, a job loss, health situation, or you may have a savings goal that you just want to accelerate. You want to pay off debt. You want to save. You're trying to move. You're trying to, you know, whatever it might be. There are times where it's like, okay, I really need to make this cut. And it's not about never having fun again. It's about just focusing for a period of time to really drastically cut back on expenses so you can achieve what it is you're trying to achieve. And so that's what we're going to get into. We have six tips. Uh, this is also a topic that we cover very extensively on the Clever Girl Finance blog. So definitely stop by the website, clevergirlfinance.com slash blog and search for expenses cutting back. But we're going to share six key tips with you. Yes, the first tip is to track your expenses. And this is just so that um, you are aware 
of um, all of your expenses because sometimes we think we'll know. Like, for example, me at one time, like I used to go to Starbucks all the time and I thought I was spending like $50, $60 a month. And I found out when I, after tracking my spending, that I was paying $200, spending $200. So that allowed me to like cut back on that. Um, and this is important because you can't, you can't just know, like, like me, like I, you know, I was guessing that and I was you know, underestimating <laughs> by a lot. So this is going to give you the opportunity to um, establish a baseline on your spending levels. Yes. So number one is tracking your expenses. If you're trying to cut back on your expenses, you need to know where you're spending your money, right? So what are you paying for from food? How much are you spending on food? Is there room to cut back there? How much are you spending on uh, utilities? Can you readjust how much you're using these utilities? Can you call your phone company, your internet company, your cable company, and talk about getting a lower bill or change providers, change insurance providers? You need to track your expenses. Take a look at all your expenses, eating out, shopping, being um, your because sometimes we create budgets for things and because we have a budget in place we're like oh you know I don't have room to cut back but when was the last time you actually took an assessment of your existing budget to find opportunities especially if you need to drastically cut back so tracking your expenses and seeing where your money is going um, is very very important so if you're not sure you're or or um, you know like you, you haven't tracked your expenses in a while, get a notebook and every time you spend, write it down, write down your, your recurring expenses in your budget and make a checklist. Who, can, who do I need to contact here to um, see if I can save some money? You will be surprised if you pick up your phone and call your internet company and say, oh, do you have any specials? They'll give you 10% off, 20% off. Insurance, insurance providers are running deals all the time. Your grocery store may be having a big summer clear out sale where if your budget for groceries are $200, for example, you may only need to spend 150 because you spent that time really tracking and looking up what you're spending your money on. Again, this is not something that you have to do every day, but this is in that season where you feel like you really need to cut back on those expenses. This is just you being, you prioritizing where you're spending your money so that you can track to see where are the opportunities. Yes. Um, and it's good to like track your spending for um, at least a month. So you can get a better picture. And then that will help you with tip number two, which is create and follow a budget. So once you have a clear um, picture of where your money goes, you can create your budget to help you um, with your spending and not going overboard. So on cleverfinance.com, um, we have budget templates there and tools that can help you to create your budget. Um, I don't think a budget should be um, boring. You don't have to call it a budget, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and it's good to sort of get a friend or someone to get on board and you can keep each other accountable. Yes, yes, I see people sharing the things that they are doing. So Agnieszka says she uses her calendar to write down every time she spends money. Andrea said under underestimating gets her every time. Tracy said she started cutting corners so she can pay off her debt, like buying a washing machine to wash her clothes, clothes at home versus going out to do laundry. Um, so the second point is to create and follow a budget. So now you're tracking your expenses. That was number one. You're looking at where your money is going. Number two, creating and following a budget. It sounds obvious, but this is really an important uh, step to cutting expenses because your budget is you setting a plan for what your money is going to do. It's you as the boss, you as the CEO of your finances saying, okay, this is where my money is going, but now you're not just going to go anywhere money. I'm going to tell you exactly where to go because I'm trying to cut back on my expenses. So that's where the budget comes in. So at this in this season, you may need to revamp your budget based on what you have learned from tracking your expenses. Maybe you need to just create all new numbers because now you have more insight. Or you may need to, if you've never budgeted before, you're trying to cut back on spending and expenses for goals. This is a good time to create that first budget and really tell your money where it's going to go. There are some expenses that you can't really do much about because they are fixed. Your rent, you know, is fixed. You're tied into that lease. The mortgage is fixed. You're tied into that um, interest rate. Uh, your car note is fixed, right? Because you're at this, you're not not like you're refinancing or anything. Like there are some fixed expenses, right, that you have to pay. But there's other expenses that may have opportunities, like I mentioned, food, travel, certain utilities, going out to eat, spending on clothing, personal care, like really 
when you lay out your budget, decide, okay, this is how much makes sense for me to apply to this category so that I can drastically cut back on my expenses. Or you know what? I'm going to completely pause on this category for a month, for two months or three months and take all that money from that category that is a non-essential and put it towards cutting down my expenses so I can achieve my goals. So that's really important. You need to either adjust your budget or start a budget so that once you track your expenses, you know where your money is going, you can now tell that money exactly what to do. That is what the budget is. Your budget is not to punish you. It's not to deprive you. It's not to tell you what you cannot do. Your budget is you as the boss saying, hey, money, this is what you're going to do for me because I work so hard for you. Yes, exactly. Yes. So Tammy says, I have to learn to tell people no. Yes. No. Saying no will save you so much money. Listen, no, I cannot come out. No, I'm not going to pay for what you ate. <laughs> No, I'm not going to loan you money. <laughs> no, not today. No, I, you know what? I can't hear you. You're breaking up. No, sorry. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then Puni said, I think I track, but I don't budget. It is important to budget, especially when you're in that mode of trying to cut back on expenses. Uh, Agnieszka says she uses the envelope budgeting method with multiple bank accounts and a spreadsheet for bills and sinking funds. So the envelope budgeting method is where you basically assign cash to diff your different bills and you put them in envelopes, either physical or digital. Uh, we have an article on clevergirlfinance.com, multiple articles that talk up, that talks about the envelope budgeting method if you want to explore what Agnesa is talking about. Um, and then Tandy said, I thought budget was the first step, but I understand why tracking expenses should be the initial step. You can do these in tandem, right? You have a budget, but are you sticking to your budget? You need to track your expenses and see where, where your money is going, right? So you can do track your expenses budget, or you can do them in tandem. The key is that you need to do these two things. You create the plan and you see where the money is going so that you can work according to plan. That's the key. Andrea says, my bank account says I cannot come out and play. That's okay for right now. Listen to your bank account. Save that money. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's keep going. Yes. Tip number three is to make a debt payoff plan. So if you're carrying consumer debt, um, just consider um, your debt situation um, in this scenario. And I know that it sounds daunting to give up a lot of your income towards debt. Um, but once the debt is gone, then you can allocate that money that you were using for your credit cards um, to pay down debt. And when you make a, a debt payoff plan, it's good to just write it down and say, this is how much I'm going to spend. I'm gonna put towards my spending, I mean, towards my credit card, and then you'll have a date of when like, you'll pay it off completely, and that'll just keep you uh, motivated to pay it off quickly. Mm -hmm. And I would add that when you have a debt payoff plan, so if you are paying off debt, especially that high interest, very expensive credit card debt, personal loan debt, um, if you have a debt payoff plan in place, right, this can be the motivation to help you cut back, cut back on expenses so you can put more money towards that debt. Your debt payoff plan is not to show just to show you how much you owe. You already know how much you owe. Maybe you haven't added it all up together, but you have a sense of what you owe here, there, there. So having that plan where you add it all up, you look at the different interest rates, you look at what the debt is costing, you look at the minimum payment to determine how much you can pay extra each month to your debt can be the motivator to helping you say, you know what, let me go back to that budget. Let me track those expenses. Expenses. What can I take out of here to put towards paying down this debt? And so when it comes to cutting back on expenses, having a debt payoff plan is important because you need to know how much you need to obligate to that debt when you cut back on your expenses. Uh, I see some comments. Um, Jennifer says that she's keeping close track of expenses to pay off debt, cooking at home, bringing food to work, paying bills, and trying to save a little until it gets better. I love that. Well done. Uh, you said budgeting is stressful. No, again, you have to adjust your mindset about this. It's stressful if you think your money is the boss of you, but you're the boss. You're the CEO in this company. Listen, you're going to tell that money what it's going to do. They may talk back. They may give you attitude. <laughs> they may get all sassy, but you know what? This is what it's going to be, right? And to help you control those dollars, automation can help you, right? Where you automate the savings, you automate the certain bill payments, and you just check in. So adjust that mindset of a stressful and say budgeting is empowering me to achieve my goals. Honestly, just change the way you think about it can just help you feel better about it. Um, Analyst says, I like to color code my spending tracker. That way I can see at a glance how much I'm spending that month. I love that as well. Um, okay. 
Okay, okay, so let's keep going. <laughs> I have some questions. So we'll come back to questions at the end of when we go over the points. Uh, we'll answer a couple questions at the end. Tracy said, my dream is to make my student loans balance transform into my bank account balance. Um, Listen, these tips can help you get there. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> um, the fourth tip is to quit using your your credit cards, um, if they're causing you to overspend. So um, credit cards, if we use them, we don't see the money. Whereas if you switch over to cash, you see the money in your wallet, you see that um, the money's depleting and then you'll be more like um, mindful of like what you're gonna spend your money on. So just ditch the credit cards. Um, when possible and opt in for cash instead. Yeah, so credit cards, when it comes to cutting back on expenses, credit cards are so easy to spend money on, especially you might be good at your budget, you may have extra money, but that credit card is so easy to spend because it's a card, you don't see the dollars leaving your hands, you may have memorized your number, it's easy to do the one-click pay online, and the money just leaves, you know, oh, just a small amount, I'll pay it off, just a small amount, I'll pay it off, and that amount ends up adding up, and so credit cards are a very slippery slope because most people, even I overspend when I am using credit cards, right? Especially if I haven't planned that expense in advance. So if you're using credit cards, you want to build that expense into your budget. Using your credit card to buy groceries this month that you're paying off because you want to get the points, you want to get the rewards, that's perfectly fine. I'm all for the points, I'm all for the rewards, but was that spending in your budget? Was it planned? Credit cards become really slippery when you didn't plan it, but then you have a $5,000 limit, a $10,000 limit. Oh, free money. Oh, my money. And then you do some random mental calculations about how you can pay it off when you know you really can't. And then you swipe the credit card and you're overspending. And the end of the month comes and it's like, wait a minute. I was trying to cut back on expenses to pay off my debt to save for this thing, but I have to pay this credit card bill now. If you're finding yourself in that situation where your credit card is distracting you from your goals, freeze that card. Go online, every every credit card offering or service provider now has an option where you can freeze the credit card online. Freeze it, okay? So the next time you try to pay for it, it gets declined. And it's, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It got declined because I was trying to check myself so I don't have to have a credit card bill for non-essentials when I'm trying to focus on paying off this debt or saving this money. So quit using credit cards if they are causing you overspend. Again, credit cards are not bad. They are a tool. The rewards, the points are amazing. Get your rewards, get your points. They can help you get plane tickets, all kinds of stuff, but it has to be tied to planned spending. This is how you leverage credit cards to your benefit, right? Uh, thank you, JG. We appreciate you so much. <laughs> so kind of you. Seriously, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, so that was number four. Uh, and I see a few comments on here. Agniska says that she spends so much more if it's on the credit card. Yeah, me on my credit card, especially when I travel, it's like, what budget? What budget, please? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> and Agniska said it always add, adds up. It's always a surprise at the end of the month. I don't wait till the end of the month. I'll check at the end of the day. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go return something. Oh goodness, what are we not spending money on tomorrow? <laughs> Because when I travel, I feel more comfortable using my credit card uh, for protection and also because they don't charge you international exchange fees, uh, foreign transaction fees. A lot of credit cards don't. Uh, but again, there should be a budget, right? You want to tie it to your budget. Uh, Cindy and Sadie said, I find it hard to repay my loan for my daughter. Whenever I have no cash, I ask her to borrow $20. I think I owe her more than I can calculate. Uh, I think maybe don't ask her to borrow and tell her to tell you no the next next time you ask her. <laughs> okay, so that was number four. Uh, so number five, let's get to number five. And I saw someone that already does this, but eat at home instead of dining out. And a lot of us know this already. It's cheaper to eat at home than out in a restaurant, especially um, when you include like taxes and tips. Um, so just, you want to, sorry, there was <laughs> something on my glasses. Um, do you want to go ahead and when you do like grocery shopping to cook at home, stick to, um, supermarkets that have 
um, affordable um, food and products. You don't want to go to like a Whole Foods where everything's so expensive. You want to probably just stick to um, a supermarket like Aldi's um, so you can get your best deals there. Yeah, so eating at home instead of dining out. And this, I think, definitely includes meal planning. So, you know, there are lots of times people will say, but I love the meal from this place. Guess what? YouTube is so incredible that um, you can find pretty much any recipe that you can make at home. There is this channel I mentioned. I, I, I saw I was watching it somewhere um, that I shared. On, I shared not too long ago. And basically he does he does incredible recipes and meals from like five dollars a week, ten dollars a week, like basic, basic stuff. He'll take whatever you have in your in your pantry and turn it into something super incredible. You guys need to check out this channel. Like I was watching, I was like, oh my goodness, I have all these things I need to try out. I'm going to look for the channel right now. I need to find it so that you guys know what it's called. It's something, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to tell you. I have to tell you this because it's a really, really useful resource for meal planning and getting yourself motivated to cook. And he he does it in a way that it's he's entertaining. Struggle meals. Please check out Struggle Meals. I do not know him personally. It is such a good channel. Like he will, he will make your twenty dollars last you two weeks. <laughs> check out this channel. I'm gonna put it on the screen. Um, so eating, because you know the reason why we highlight as one of the ways to cut back um, eating out. The reason why we highlight eating out here as one of the ways to cut back is because eating out is a huge, huge expense for many people when you don't realize it. Buying the coffees. Again, I'm not saying don't buy your coffee. Buy your coffee if it fits into your budget, but it adds up. And if you're trying to drastically cut back, this is a place you cut back. I've seen people spend $10, $15 on coffee because they went in to buy the coffee for $4, $3, whatever. Then they got a snack. They got a bottle of water. They got this. Before you know it, they're spending 20 bucks a day at this coffee store, right? Um, you buy lunch. You buy dinner. You buy snacks. Those things add up to hundreds of dollars every single week. If you take that money... You can shop groceries for a month for a family if you are creative and you have time. So please check out this channel. I don't know him of this channel because it's just so creative, especially when you're on that budget, when you're being super lean, right? Also, I see someone else under uh, analyst mentions multi-purpose foods. Check that out. I see other recommendations. Kevin Fit Men Cook. Uh, where are the fit women that cook? <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> but yes, uh, Agnieszka says she makes a lot of crock pot casseroles. So to definitely get, explore, get creative. Andrea says foods, you can make more than one meal, turkey, spaghetti, tacos. Like Trader Joe's, you can buy a, a pack of pasta for like 89, 99 cents, a pasta sauce for $2. That's three dinners in a week, right? Um, so just how do you get creative? We have a ton of articles on the site on meal planning, on budget meals, on cheap meals, on feeding family, on cleverwellfinance.com. So check it out. And I'm also going to expand on this uh, this this point. So we're talking about eating at home instead of dining out. But I also want you to think about other ways you can save, right? So when you go to the grocery store, because you're trying to meal plan, think about buying items on sale, especially the more expensive items like the meats, the the uh, the um dairy items, right? Uh, buy things in bulk, like your dry goods, your grains, your cereals, your oatmeal, your, your uh, um, seasonings. Um, also look at generic store brand products. Store brands are really good. Many stores have really good products. They have organic lines. They have like gluten-free lines and they're significantly cheaper than your brand names. Sometimes they're made on the same production line. I've read right, by the same company who just repackages it differently for the store. And then look at your store coupons, right? I have a shop right by me. They send me coupons. I use the app to do online shopping sometimes because when I get to the store, I'm distracted. I'd rather pay the delivery fee than be in the store and spend five times the delivery fee buying nonsense I did not need. So, you know, think about how you can, or do the pickup, right? Because I think they charge $4 for pickup. So, that prevents it from being in the store and getting distracted and spending 50 bucks on stuff I did not need. Look at their coupons. Sometimes they'll do offers in their apps. Uh, you can do, if you have time, 
online research on different stores and their coupons for the week for which products are on sale. And that is how you can save more money to cut back on those expenses and put that money towards something else. So eating out is a big, big, big one. Spending on credit cards is a big, big, big one because we're like, oh, it's just this much. Oh, I'll just pay it off. But it really, 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 really does add up. Yes, it does. Um, so many then, great uh, meals, meal suggestions here. Thank you for for sharing these, everyone. <laughs> so, Jennifer, if you're going to be traveling and you're going to be eating out, build it into your budget in advance. So you can say, you know what, for this trip, I'm only spending a hundred dollars eating out prioritize where you want to eat out. <laughs> Make that $100 worth it. Don't buy random food. Prioritize that Caribbean restaurant, that best New York, New York City pizza, so that you can know, okay, you know what? I spent my $100 and it was worth it. <laughs> and we did talk about number six very uh, briefly, but we'll talk about it again. Yes, and that is to use grocery apps to cut on groceries. Um, so this is going to help you maximize um, your savings if you use it as a tool. Um, those apps are great for giving you coupons and cashbacks on, on your, some of your groceries. But the caveat here is that um, they'll have um, products on sale that you don't really need, but you're tempted to buy it because it's on sale or because you get extra points um, if you buy a particular item. I was falling into this. Um, I was I'm, I use Fetch. I'm, I'm a big fan of that app. Um, but sometimes they'll put on the home screen, hey, if you get, you know, a, two bags of Lay's chips, we'll give you 700 points. And it's like, oh, tempting, but I don't eat Lay's chips. So, um, yeah, it could it could be tempting. So just like, um, just be wary of that. Yes, yes. So those apps um, will show you the coupons, but they'll also show you how to spend. So really, before I get in my Shoprite app, because again, listen, you got, if you if you watch this channel enough or listen to the podcast enough, the Clever Girls Know podcast, you know that me and the grocery store, when it comes to overspending, that's the one place that I just. I need help from Jesus, from something, somebody, because <laughs> it's like I get in there, I'm like a deer, <laughs> deer in headlights. Like, oh my God! <laughs> so before I open my ShopRite app, I actually have a list, okay? So I don't want to see, great, you have your Lays on sale, good for you, ShopRite, but guess what? I'm sticking to my shopping list. When I do not have that list that I open that app, I'm adding all kinds of trash to my my account my to my cart but the good thing is that because it's not in person i don't feel pressure to check out i'm not like hustling to the checkout line i can be like you know what Paula? pause go back delete all this trash from your cart that you don't need that your kids don't like okay <laughs> and then readjust yourself so keep that in mind agniska said the walmart app has a way to make a shopping list and it'll totally up for you so you know ahead of time how much it's going to be that's very helpful um, Andrea said, do not shop while hungry. No, don't do it because everything's going to sound amazing. Uh, little lady says shop Wednesday at Homeland. Um, Joy said she spends less when she orders online instead of going into the store. Yes. Yeah, so a list and leveraging the app for the longest time. I didn't want to spend the $14.99 for delivery. I didn't want to. When I really sat down and looked at my spending on groceries, I was spending way more than $14.99 in the store on things I never planned to buy. Right. Or I didn't want to spend the four dollars and ninety nine cents for pickup, but I was spending fifty dollars extra on nonsense. I was never on my list. So for me, online grocery shopping help is helpful. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like to use online grocery shopping because they don't um, they just put whatever in the cart. They don't check the fresh goods there in, in the apps. There are notes you can put for your shopper and you can tell your shopper, please check the fruits. Right. Please check the fruits. Make sure they're not rotten. Check this, this, this. And guess what? When they deliver it to you and it's not what you expect, you can return it. Pick up your phone, call your store, and they will credit you. ShopRite has done that when I get rotten fruit, and they don't tell me to bring the fruit back. So guess what? I get half a bag of good fruit, and I get my money back. So there are ways around what you think might be your, your reason why you don't want to use the app. I see a really good question here. Someone says, can you share any other idea or suggestions for those of us who are not privileged to have grocery apps in our country? So we just talked about this briefly, but having a list, 
Do not go to the store hungry. Uh, maybe do some research online about prices, right? Lay out your budget. You have $100 for groceries. These are the core essential you need to buy under this $100. This is what maybe I can try, right? For example, but having that list, not going, um, not going hungry, um, looking in your pantry to see what you already have before you go to shop because there are many times that I have bought duplicates because I did not check my pantry. Meal planning, what can I use in my pantry to make certain foods versus what I need to buy, right? So those are some ways that you can get around it if you don't have grocery apps. And grocery apps are fairly new, right? Uh, a few years ago, I was not using the grocery app. We didn't even have grocery apps for like Instacart. All these platforms are not around, right? Most of us can remember when we just had to go to the store or um, you know, like to just go shopping. So keep that in mind as well. Simone says, I shop at Whole Foods and the health store. I cut back on everything, but groceries is a struggle. Um, honestly, good food does not have to be expensive. I will say that you can find good, nutritious, organic, well-prepared, well-made food at fractions of the cost of what you think it is. It's all about getting creative. Whole Foods is an expensive store that sells organic products, but guess what? Aldi also has organic products. Store brands, mm -hmm. ShopRite store brands, um, Kroger store brands, much cheaper than what you might find at Whole Foods, right? And a lot of times you can't even tell what it is, the different, the taste and the different, they can't tell the difference in taste. So be open to other options. I know people who love their stores, love their stores, right? Especially if you're looking for specific brands, but be open to exploring. Again, this topic is about cutting back, right? So it might be just for the season. You don't go to Whole Foods right now. Instead, you're going to Aldi, you're going to Trader Joe's, you're going to Andreas as the farmer, farmer's markets for this season. Once you've reached that goal, you've saved that money, right? From this drastic cutback, you go back to Whole Foods again. So it's all about just, you know, being intentional about maybe getting out of your comfort zone a little bit so that you can achieve your goal. Um, Analyst also says adding veggies to meals you already have, you already make or eat is a great and easy way to start eating healthier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our six tips were to track your expenses, create or update your budget to cut back, look for opportunities, create a debt payoff plan so you know what you need to pay. You can get motivated to cut back to put more money towards that debt. Quit using credit cards because they can trigger overspending. Um, eat at home instead of dining out. Use grocery apps to cut back on grocery expenses. We also shared other tips, right? Buying generic, looking at store brands, finding coupons. Uh, also exchanges, right? Um, exchanges with neighbors, with family members. You need to buy sugar, ask your neighbor, <laughs> ask your sister, ask your cousin. You need some salt, you need some milk, ask. you. Listen, this is about drastically cutting back ask. Also, um, you know, if you're someone that um, like reusable products, basically think about reusable products as opposed to always having to buy disposable products like water, right? Water costs, you know, you can get a box of water for five or $10, but that's five or $10 you don't need to spend. Buy a reusable water bottle, fill it up, put your ice in it, right? So think about things that you can cut back on so you can save more money. Um, and this also says frozen vegetables are cheap. Yes. But I want to, um, Whole Foods is not expensive if you're selective at what you're buying. I buy some things at Whole Foods. Yes, I agree as well. Uh, it all depends on what you're buying at these different stores. Keep in mind that Trader Joe's, Aldi, they also have some very expensive things, right? Uh, so again, do your research, determine what you're buying from where. I shop at multiple places. I shop at Target as, uh, at, I shop at Target, I shop at Trader Joe's, I shop at ShopRite, and I shop at Costco. And that's what I have around me and um, sort of delivery of where I can go to. And I plan out where I'm getting what cheapest from where. Costco is in bulk, but guess what? They're not always cheaper when it comes to certain items. It's cheaper to get them at Target, right? And certain items are cheaper to get at the local grocery store or in Trader Joe's if they carry them. So make your plan and do your research. Um, okay, so I want to go back. I see a few questions here. Um, I'm going to try to answer questions that are applicable to this topic. We have a Q&A coming up in two weeks. By the way, we're not here next week. Our summer schedule is a little flexible because of vacations, time off, and stuff like that. We'll be back to a more consistent schedule from September. But next week, we're not here. The following week is a Q&A. So submit your questions. We will answer them there as well. 
There's a question here I don't understand. Take a percentage off of your earnings to put for variable expenses. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm not going to answer it. Okay, I think we've been answering questions actually as we've been going along, Yasmir. Let me see. If you have a question you want us to answer, put it in the comments now so we can see it. Okay, so Tammy says the bulk of my credit cards are, the bulk of my debt are credit cards. Is it wise to consolidate or pay off one by one? That's a good question. Um, consolidation is one of those things where it, it, it when you consolidate, right, all you do is you're moving money from here to here. Consolidation is typically for convenience or because you're getting a better interest rate. And sometimes you're getting a better interest rate, but the fees that it costs you to consolidate, even with a better interest rate, are equal to what you're paying now. So consolidation only makes sense if the math makes sense, the fee, right, makes sense, and the interest rate makes sense, and you are able to pay off that debt before that offer or interest rate that you're given expires. Because a lot of times, once that consolidation offer is over, the rate jumps, and many times it's more than what you are already paying now. So as opposed to focusing on consolidation, unless you're like super, like, you know, you have so many credit cards and there's so many different dates and it's overwhelming, I would create a debt repayoff plan prioritize your debt by highest interest rate or smallest balance, and then focus on paying more than the minimum to your top balance. Uh, stop by clevergirlfinance.com, search, consolidate. We break down the pros and cons of consolidation in an article there as well. Um, okay. Analyst says a water filter will save you a ton. Yes, a water filter, reusable bamboo towels or paper towels. Yes, silicone zip up bags, uh, having your own utensils with you in your bag, even though many times they'll give you for free, but those plastic ones are not great for the uh, environment. Uh, we use straws at home and I used to buy straws a long time ago, but now we all, we have metal reusable straws. So a lot of those things to save you um, save you money. Okay, so some of these other questions are not necessarily applicable to this topic, and we're short on time now. So we are going to table these for the Q&A session. I see the questions. Uh, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to make a note of these so that we can include them to our, our Q&A session. Uh, Tracy, you're afraid your student loans might take 10 years to pay off. What advice can you give me about paying off in a shorter time? Leverage the tips from this session about how you can cut back and then repurpose that money towards paying extra to your principal balance on your student loans. Every extra payment you make for your student loans, make sure it's going towards your principal balance and not to interest. Super, super important because student loans are typically in an amortization schedule, which is like your mortgage, right? Um, and your mortgage basically tells you this is how much you're going to pay for this time period, 30 years, right? So whether you pay more, they're just going to reapply the interest, the payments you make towards interest. So you want to pay to your principal balance so that you can bring down that balance. And at the same time, when that interest compounds, you're bringing out, bringing out how much you owe. So think about ways from the tips we've shared as to how you can cut back to put more money towards your loans and put that extra payments towards your principal balance. I just said, how do I invest in small business? Okay, so <laughs> you can, how do you, that's a, that's a load of question. Are you starting a small business you want to invest in? Are you trying to invest in other people's small business? Um, do you, are you trying to be an investor, right? Or are you trying to invest in your own small business? Okay, Q&A is in two weeks, August 29th, right? Yes. So we'll answer, we're gonna answer all these questions and more. We have a great time at our Q&A session because it's all about you. We talk about business, finances, career, whatever you wanna talk about, we'll answer those questions. But we are out of time now and we appreciate you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and spending your summer afternoon. The weather is so good outside in New York, New Jersey. Um, so um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye everyone. Bye.